Nemesis sets out to recruit a worthy criminal to be his new partner and rebuild the empire he lost when superheroes returned. When the villain you love to hate makes another villain in his own image, will any force on Earth be able to stop them? Let's find out in the review of Nemesis Rogues Gallery number 2 from Dark Horse Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Nemesis Rogues Gallery number 2. No. No, 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 no. No. You are not supposed to be entertained by the villain. That's not how this is supposed to go. Boy, Mark Miller somehow makes you feel a little dirty inside with the latest entry in the comic series about a villain you love to hate. So Nemesis Rogues Gallery number two may make you question your moral compass, but at least you'll have fun doing it. Before we dig into this issue, let's recap what happened in Nemesis Rogues Gallery number one. The titular character bided his time in a hospital while paralyzed from the neck down after the events of Big Game. A platoon of mercenaries stormed the hospital to rescue Nemesis so he could be taken to his old master for a healing blood ritual bath of sorts, start to scheme how to rebuild his empire, and possibly take on a sidekick. Meanwhile, one of the hospital employees who survived the attack but was left blinded by the mercenaries receives a visit from a recruiter and a team of people who may just want some payback. That brings us to the current issue, which is Nemesis Rose Gallery number two. The issue starts with a jail cell in Rio de Janeiro occupied by a career criminal by the name of Pedro Hernandez. Pedro is preparing to meet the judge, but the occupant in the next cell has a better idea. He explains that there is a series of useful devices that are placed around the courthouse facilities intended to help Pedro escape, including keys for his cuffs and a secretly placed gun inside the courtroom. But all that only works if Pedro has the guts and the commitment to follow instructions. Pedro, being the career criminal that he is, eagerly agrees. As we'll soon see, Mark Miller's latest addition to the Nemesis group of associates is introduced with all the sharp, laser-focused, and brutal efficiency that makes Nemesis such a lethal character. There's no redeeming aspect to Pedro Hernandez's personality, so he seems to be a perfect choice to follow Nemesis on his path to dominance, and you'll love to hate Pedro just as much as you love to hate Nemesis. Pedro does indeed follow instructions, resulting in a frantic courtroom shootout, an improvised change in plans when the first exit is blocked, and an explosive distraction. Nemesis not only handles the last leg of Pedro's escape personally, but he handles it with style. What follows is a quick series of scenes where Nemesis requires Pedro to commit to the job completely, a montage of training lessons in technical skills, fighting skills, and social charms, and in every sense of the word, Nemesis strips Pedro down to his essence and remakes the new partner into the peak of criminal prowess. In a roundabout sort of way, Mark Miller is borrowing from another classic tale to create the most offbeat, hyper-violent, sadistic, but in a black comedy sort of way version of Pygmalion you never knew you needed. Pedro dives into his lessons with gusto as Nemesis remakes Pedro's mind-body influence to match his own. This shouldn't be fun, it's not supposed to be fun, or maybe it is supposed to be fun, but you feel like it's not supposed to be fun, but somehow it's fun. It's a quick issue and you get to the ending very quickly, but it all wraps up with a nice neat little bow. The issue concludes with Nemesis coming into some quick money via the violent means, of course. Pedro putting on his big boy pants and it looks, as Nemesis would say, badass. And Andy, the blinded hospital worker, learning the tools of the trade for his path of revenge. Overall, to be fair, Mark Miller's plot is still sort of forming and taking shape, but it's clear he's setting up a collision course between Nemesis and Pedro as his new partner and sidekick, and the revenge group who's out for payback. That said, the journey is unbelievably entertaining, so Nemesis turns out to be one of the rare circumstances where you're just happy to be along for the ride and don't mind if you don't quite know where the story is going just yet. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Valerio Gian Giordano's artwork hits the nail on the head by depicting a supervillain story that looks grounded and gritty while still carrying an element of surrealism. Nemesis would look silly if you saw him on the street in real life, just this guy walking around in this all-white costume with a cape and a cowl. But Gian Giordano infuses an element of gleeful menace in his eyes and the way the villain carries himself to let you know you need to stay far away from this guy, which is exactly the point. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture for a second. The events that paralyzed Nemesis in issue number one took place in last year's big game crossover. None of those developments are really mentioned in this issue, but Nemesis does point out that the superheroes are now public knowledge and they're starting to form teams. 
That small tidbit could suggest Nemesis will cross paths with those teams in the near future, or that Miller World has more team books in development. Final thoughts, what do we think about Nemesis Rogues Gallery number two? It takes the villain you love to hate and spreads that love when he takes on a junior partner you will love to hate just as much. A villain-centric comic shouldn't be this entertaining, but it is. So kudos to Mark Miller for, for producing another winner. Plus, Gian Giordano's art looks great. Therefore, Nemesis Rogues Gallery number two earns a nine out of 10. It's hard to believe that a comic about an irredeemable villain could be one of the most fun comics on the market, but Mark Miller somehow he makes it work. But what do you think? Is Nemesis one of your favorite middle world characters? Give us a thumbs up if he is, and leave us a comment below if you prefer another middle world character or title instead. I want to know which is your favorite. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.